If you've ever tried searching the internet for the best way to make a character controller from scratch, you've likely come across, as I have many times now, lots of people dismissing the problem outright. Just use a dynamic rigid body, just float your collider off the ground, just use the built-in controller. Now, don't get me wrong, these are all perfectly valid solutions in many cases, especially if you're trying to throw something together really quickly, such as during a game jam. But they are not THE solution, counter to what many annoying YouTubers and Stack Overflow repliers seem to believe. There are some good existing solutions out there, on YouTube or the Unity Asset Store, even many that are free. Now, personally, I think a lot of these are far too complicated for their own good, but it's hard to deny their effectiveness at colliding with even very complex geometry without clipping through walls, falling through floors, jittering, or really bugging out in any way. The way they're able to accomplish this is using a surprisingly simple algorithm called Collide and Slide. Here we have our character, represented by a capsule as is common across the vast majority of modern 3D games. The Collide and Slide algorithm actually works with any shaped collider as long as it's supported by your game engine, so for the sake of simplicity, let's instead represent our character using a sphere, and we'll move the origin to the center as well. Let's say our character is moving in a straight line with some arbitrary velocity. We'll forget about stuff like gravity for now. Eventually, our character encounters an obstacle. Because our character is kinematic and not being driven by the physics system, by default it'll just pass right through. So what should we do instead? Let's briefly touch on collision detection. If you're using a pre-existing engine, collision detection is fairly straightforward. In Unity, we can make use of the built-in shape casting functions, which take a shape and sweep it along a direction to detect any intersections. In this case, using sphere cast obviously makes the most sense. But collision detection isn't really what we're concerned with. Like I said, that's pretty much taken care of for us. What we actually care about is collision response. Let's go back to this simple example. What should we do when we encounter an obstacle in our path? Well, the naive approach, I guess you could call it, would be to move as close to the surface as possible without overlapping, and then stop. And in this case, that's actually what we would want. But what about this case? Or even better, this one? Here, just stopping when we collide doesn't make as much sense. And that's where the collide and slide algorithm, as defined by Casper Fowerby in his paper Improved Collision Detection and Response, comes into play. Let's break it down to the absolute basics. We start with an initial position and velocity. If a collision is detected along the velocity vector, we reduce the velocity to stop just before the collision point. This is the collision step from before. Now for the sliding. We subtract this new velocity from the original velocity to get the leftover amount we would have continued moving had there been no collision. Then, using the normal vector from the collision data we collected, we project this leftover amount onto the collision plane. In Unity, we can use the built-in project on plane function. If you're not using Unity, don't worry, projecting a vector along a plane is quite a common formula and should be easy to find with a quick Google search. You might have noticed that projecting our leftover velocity has lost a lot of magnitude. That is, the resulting vector is much shorter than our initial vector, meaning we won't move as far as we're supposed to. To remedy this, we'll normalize the projected vector, giving it a magnitude of 1, and then scale it by the magnitude of the original leftover vector, which ends up looking like this. And that completes the sliding step. The final piece of the puzzle is iteration. What happens, for instance, if our projected vector passes through another obstacle? Well, we just run the calculation again, but starting from our new position and with our new velocity. This is then repeated until there are no collisions, or until we reach our maximum allowed number of iterations, also called bounces. In the end, we sum up the projected vectors, and that gives us our final velocity.
And that, in a nutshell, is the collide and slide algorithm. It does have a few small issues that I'll address at the end, but for now, let's look at how we might implement this in code. Since I'm using Unity, I'll be demonstrating using C Sharp. We'll assume that we're starting with a given velocity and we want a new velocity in return. Like we covered before, the two parameters that we absolutely need are the starting position and velocity. For the sake of space, I'll be abbreviating some of the variable names. Now, you could write this function using a loop, but I find it easier to conceptualize using recursion, where each recursive step corresponds with each collision bounce. For that, we'll also need a parameter to track our current depth in order to avoid a stack overflow. Inside the function, we first need to define a base case that will end the recursion. We'll define a member variable to cap our recursion depth and return zero if we reach that level. We'll also return the current velocity if there is no collision and we're not in the base case. Next, we'll perform our collision check. I won't go over this in a ton of detail, so if you aren't sure what's happening here, you can look for other videos or read the documentation. We'll start by defining a member variable for a skin width. Basically, a very small distance inside our collider that we start our collision checks from in order to avoid clipping through stuff due to floating point inaccuracy. Every frame will need to get our collider's bounding box and reduce it by our skin width. Here's the code for that. Because we're reducing our bounds by our skin width, the distance of our collision check will need the skin width added onto it. Then comes the actual collision check. If there is a hit, we want to get two vectors, the distance to the surface and the leftover velocity past the surface. Next, we'll project the leftover vector along the surface and scale it to the correct length. And finally, the recursion step. We return the reduced velocity plus the next level of recursion. And that's collide and slide. In this basic form, there are a couple issues that we need to solve before we can use it in our character controller. The most important fix is a check to make sure that our snap to surface distance is greater than the skin width. This is to ensure that we always have enough room for our collision check to work properly. Next, there's some video gamey things that don't affect the collision directly, but are things you'd expect in a 3D game character. Currently, our character slides down any slope, even at very shallow angles. In most games, we only want to slide down slopes that are steeper than some predefined value. So let's define that value and then check it in our collision step. Our code is getting a little messy, so let's move our projection math into its own function. Now, the easiest way to fix this sliding issue is to split our initial velocity into a movement vector and a gravity vector, and then make two collision passes in our movement code. As Fowerby outlines in his paper, doing this actually incurs no performance penalty and helps for additional code you might implement like climbing stairs. So let's add a flag for whether or not we're in the gravity pass, and if we are, don't slide on shallow slopes. Next, we have to talk about walls, and this part is a little hard to explain, so please bear with me. Currently, our controller maintains all of its speed when sliding along a wall, no matter what angle the collision is at. You might have noticed that in most games, however, usually what happens is that moving directly into a wall stops you in your tracks, and as you try and move more parallel to the wall, your speed increases. So let's implement that we'll need to keep track of the initial direction the player was trying to move. Next, we'll scale the velocity based on the angle between the surface normal and the initial velocity. Using the dot product conveniently gives us a value between zero and one, which we can then invert. Importantly, we only want to scale the horizontal movement, so the Y coordinate of the two vectors is set to zero. Lastly, we can scale the projected vector by this value. And finally, I promise this is the last thing, to avoid jittering when moving along the bottom of a steep slope, we can treat the slope as a flat wall if the controller is grounded, 
So here we have a full implementation of the collide and slide algorithm that's actually usable in game. I used Spherecast for the collision check to keep it consistent with the animations, but it should work for any shape, including capsules. Now, there is still one minor issue with this code that I know of, and it's this. What's happening is the collision gets stuck in an infinite loop, so we end up not moving at all. The solution to this is actually outlined in a second paper by Jeff Linehan. It involves finding a crease vector between the top and bottom surfaces, and projecting along that instead of either surface. Linehan takes an iterative approach rather than recursive, but I think his solution could be adapted to work with our recursive code. I'll be sure to post a follow-up video once I figure it out. Okay, so I went back to my original code and um, this scenario just works now. And the only thing I changed was the min ceiling angle that I was using to check for a ceiling collision for gravity stuff. So uh, I guess the code works? I don't know, let me know in the comments. For now, all that's left to do is apply our function to our controller's velocity. I hope you found this video helpful and it leads to more robust collision in your games. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a nice day.